So my outlook for the CRO industry is actually quite positive. I think we're seeing an increased uh, propensity for the pharmaceutical industry to outsource um, and that's happening at a global level across all clinical trial phases and the CRO industry is um, expanding to meet those needs. Outsourcing is important because it provides the sponsor companies flexibility in terms of the resource they need at different points in time. I think what we're also seeing now is that the CRO industry has a great breadth of drug development expertise. So you're bringing in resource and expertise to really help facilitate fast, efficient and quality driven clinical trials. We will see growth for CROs, but what we'll also see is investment from the CROs back in to help facilitate and accelerate that growth as well. And so the industry has evolved very much in the last few years away from being maybe just a provider of additional arms and legs to really being a pivotal part of the drug development process. And I think that's seen not only by the sponsor companies, but by regulators and, and other stakeholders as well. I think a number of the sponsor companies are, are evolving, and I think it would be difficult to look at them as a, as a homogeneous group. Uh, I think different sponsor companies are at different stages in their own evolution. Uh, some still have residual challenges on the financial side with patent expirations. Others are, are more advanced. They have a strong revenue pipeline, more um, focus on, on research and development, and bringing innovative therapies forward. I think. I get sort of quite excited when we see some of the novel compounds coming through, a little bit more focus on some of the orphan diseases, uh, some of the genetic uh, disease based diseases that are now being uh, driven through in, in terms of late stage developments. The industry has a number of challenges, I think. Um, probably most obviously is, is the regulatory environment. It changes fairly rapidly. Um, there are fairly well-established processes for change in the US and Western Europe, but clinical development is global. So there are many other countries and many other stakeholders, and being able to navigate the regulatory changes in good time to make sure that we can run fast, effective, uh, and quality-orientated clinical trials is key for the whole industry including ultimately patients, which I think is the most important factor for all of us, not just the CRO industry, but sponsor companies as well. ACRO is important because there are a number of common themes that affect the, the whole industry. Uh, and while we are competitive organizations in our, in our day jobs, I think there's a realization that having a common voice with regulators and legislators, not just here in the US, but in Europe and at the global level, is critically important so that we, we do have a voice in establishing the environment that allows clinical trials to be run successfully. So my involvement, INC will, will continue to be actively involved. Uh, we feel it's important from a, a company perspective that we're involved in the association. Uh, so we expect that not only myself, but a number of my team members will be involved in the main part of the organization, the main governance and committee, but also a number of the subcommittees that focus on, on other aspects, particularly privacy, the regulatory environment, uh, and also some of the benchmarking as well. So in terms of the benchmarking work, I, I think we have worked closely with other stakeholders in the industry to look at cycle times, to look at quality, um, and really make sure that there is a, a focus on continuous improvement. We certainly know what the, the cost of drug development is. It continues to escalate. Uh, and we really need to find ways of being more efficient in the delivery of clinical trials, yet focused on patient welfare and delivering quality data. In the end of the day, we want to make sure that if drugs do get to market, then they have passed all the necessary hurdles for safety and efficacy, uh, and that we're getting true positives coming out from a, a therapeutic standpoint. It's important that the industry continues to move forward. Uh, even though we are a, a competitive organization, I think it's critically important that the, the CRO industry in its, in its whole succeeds uh, and provides really the services that the biopharmaceutical industry is looking for and the quality standards that regulators, sites and patients are looking for. And that's very hard to achieve as individual organizations where you may be pulling in slightly different directions. To do that under one umbrella where there is a common theme and common voice and focus around issues that are common but non-competitive, uh, I think is good. 
So I think next year we'll maybe see a little bit more involvement with ACRO, not just with our sponsor companies and the regulators, but maybe patient advocacy groups. Um, there is an association that's now focused on clinical research sites, really bringing physicians more into the fold in terms of their participation in clinical research. In terms of the things that I think ACRO can feel most proud of and the member companies, I, I think we're continuing to see improvements in quality. Uh, there's an emphasis on process improvement, there's an emphasis on training, and really bringing in additional expertise into the industry at all levels, whether that's in the medical field, the scientific field, and really just good core drug development expertise. Patients are key. Uh, in the end of the day, we don't run clinical trials unless we have motivated clinical investigators and motivated and well-informed patients who want to participate in the clinical trial process. So they are pivotal. They're really at the center of everything the industry does. Uh, one of the challenges is, is finding protocol-specific patients. Um, so there is a sort of mantra, if you like. You, ha you have to have motivated physicians that want to act as clinical investigators. You also have to have motivated, informed, and eligible patients in order to enroll them in, in specific protocols. And as you become more specific in the diseases that you treat, uh, particularly orphan indications, but also second and third line therapies where people have failed maybe initial therapies and you're looking to then bring them back in and alter their treatment regimen, it becomes more challenging to find those patients. And, and I think we've got to adapt a little bit more to identify those patients, obviously very protective of privacy and patient rights, but really make sure that we can complete and enroll clinical trials in a, in a short condensed period because that leads to better consistency in the delivery, better data to make decisions on. Uh, and not all trials are going to be successful, but you want to get early results and you want to divert development dollars back into the next trial that's hopefully going to be successful.